Do you want to know how to get on the DECA stage and earn DECA glass in those operations research events? Then stay tuned for the best tips on how to perfect that presentation and get DECA glass. Welcome back to the Bowtie Goat YouTube channel where if you try hard enough, you can be the next DECA goat. So you've planned that paper, you've designed that research study, and you've written a really good operations research paper. But now you need to take that paper and present it to the judge. What if I told you if you follow these tips, you will have a much better presentation and you will probably get yourself to the DECA stage. You really want to know, right? So let's go through what are the most missed items of a student who's preparing their operations research event. And if you haven't already seen it, you should probably check out my video about how to prepare your presentation boards and some general presentation tips. But today it's specific to operations research. The operations research written events have a rubric specific for the written paper and the rubric specific for the presentation. The written paper rubric has 13 different categories which you can be judged on for your paper. The presentation portion of the rubric has six overall things that the judge is looking for. So it's really important that you don't just repeat your paper to the judge, but you focus on those six specific items. The first and the last are really performance elements, how well you perform, how professional you are during that presentation. The middle four are really important, and if you focus on those and design your presentation around those, you will do very well. And for those that just present their paper, they're not going to do as well as you will. If you treat your presentation to the judge sort of like a role play competitor would treat the role play, each one of these components, each one of those four items is a performance indicator, if you will. So think about how a role play competitor would take that case study and perform a role play. They have a case study, a piece of information about a scenario they have to consider, and then, then they have specific performance indicators to share with the judge. You have your written paper that is like the case study. It's the scenario, but you need to also convey your knowledge of these particular performance indicators, these four elements, when you present your paper to the judge. You're not just saying, here's all the work that I did. You're demonstrating the specific knowledge, these performance indicators, through the scenario, through your written paper. And that's something that many students miss. So what I want to do next is talk through what those four key performance indicator elements are, because I contend you need to talk about them not just in relation to your paper, but you need to explain to the judge what that element is and then connect it to your paper. You want the judge to be very clear that what the judge is hearing both represents your knowledge of the content and how you apply it to your paper. The first piece of content that you need to use, that first performance indicator, if you will, that you need to explain to the judge and apply to your research study is describing the methods used in a research study. And there are oodles of them. There's a lot of things you could talk about here. So to describe the methods used in general design a research study, you first need to think about what the general purpose of the study is, whether you want to focus on qualitative or quantitative research, numbers and hard data, or some text-based uh, evidence and a lot of interviews and research in that regard, or you could do some sort of mixed method study where you're considering both. Once you know whether you want to do a qualitative, quantitative, or mixed method sort of study, which I presume a lot of you did qualitative or mixed method sort of studies, you then want to sit down and look at all the specific research tools that you might use to carry out that research design method. Some examples of research tools would be whether you just go and have observational data of what you're trying to measure, whether you sit down specifically for interviews, whether you take groups of clients and customers and do focus groups, whether you push out survey data to either employees or customers of that particular business, whether you find secondary research, research done by other organizations, and you apply that research to your research study. So there's a lot of different ways to design a research study, but you need to explain to your judge, first off, what that looks like, and then explain what you did in your particular paper. The second performance indicator or thing that you need to explain to the judge is how you interpret the research data and turn that into decision making. So in general, if you're doing a qualitative research study where you're collecting a lot of things like interviews and you had a lot of qualitative data, not numbers, coming into you, then you want to look for patterns in that data. You want to look for keywords that you can use to match up or triangulate how customers feel about a certain thing or how employees feel about a certain thing. So qualitative data uses a lot of uh, keyword matching or triangulation of data. Quantitative research requires some sort of statistical analysis. So if you ask on a Likert survey, like a one through five scale, then you should be doing quantitative data analysis of that particular research. If you did a mixed method research study, you're looking at 
not just the qualitative and the quantitative, but how they support each other and what sort of information you can get from that. And all that information that is going to tell you about the data that you collected for your research study. Once you present that content, then you should really go into what that actually meant for your particular paper, but make sure you explain the general before going specifically with what the judge is going to want to hear. The next piece of content that you want to explain to your judge is describing the strategies for and approaches for leading change. Four important parts of leading through that change would be engaging your stakeholders, asking folks around you that are important in making the decision how that decision should be carried out. The second would then be creating a shared vision of a direction that you all will go and plan together. The third is then actually creating the plan, and the fourth is implementing the plan. So any strategic plan for leading through change requires all those components. Again, you want to explain what in general that means, and then apply it specifically for the work that you did in your research paper. The last element your judge is listening for when you present is describing the nature of budgets. And just like we've done for the other ones, you need to start in general and then make it specific to your paper or to the work that you've done. A budget is a financial tool that communicates income and expenses of a company. It's usually at least done annually, but it could be done quarterly for a business. Businesses need to be very careful in tracking their budgets over time to make sure they detail all the income that they have coming in and all the expenses that they have going out so that they can reconcile any differences and manage the financial statements for their company. The budget is a very important tool for a business to manage all of their assets and manage all of their accounts. And it's a very important way for a business to effectively manage and use their money appropriately to push their company forward. So now you take that information and apply it specifically and get to your specific budget information. So there's the important part, folks. You want to take those four specific metrics that the judge is listening for, and you want to say them in as exact the words as you can and explain the general content and apply it to your paper. And I suggest you might spend two minutes with each one of those, uh, maybe a minute explaining what it is and maybe a minute making very specific to your paper. That's about eight minutes of your presentation. Once you get those four components established, then what you want to do is think about what else the judge needs to know in order to judge your presentation well. My students then often ask, how much of the paper do I need to explain to the judge so that the judge understands what's going on? And here's where you need to gather a little bit of information about your judge and the level of competition that you're looking at. In Pennsylvania, where I am, we don't start our written event presentation and evaluations into our state or association level conference. At Pennsylvania's state conference, the judge you're presenting to has already read your paper and evaluated the written portion. So when you go before the judge to do the presentation, it's not important to repeat all the aspects of the paper to the judge. It's really important to focus on these key elements so the judge can score specifically what uh, is on the rubric. Now, if you think that your judge has not read your paper, then it's really important to establish a context and background of your paper and your project and present that to the judge in addition to these four elements. Previously, I had said I would spend maybe two minutes each for each one of those four elements that you're supposed to present to the judge. If you don't think your judge has read your paper, I would keep explaining the content of those elements short so you can spend more time specifically on your paper, but I would still try to organize my presentation to the judge to follow the specific format on the rubric so the judge has an easy time taking through all the things that the judge needs to hear and see in your presentation. An important tip, if you're concerned that your judge either isn't going to remember your paper or hasn't read your paper, you minimally want to hand the judge your executive summary. Print that out, high color, high quality paper. If you don't think that the judge you're presenting to has seen your paper at all, which will likely be the case at ICDC, and then a presentation tip that I've made in another video is I would make sure that you print your entire paper for the judge and then I would earmark, put little sticky tabs on the different sections of the paper that you might want to highlight. So if you're explaining the nature of budgets and you want to talk about your budget specifically, hopefully it's on a presentation board behind you or on a slideshow that you're presenting to the judge, but you also could have that part of your paper earmarked so the judge could open right up to it and see about the nature of budgets. You want the judge to be able to flip to the paper if you don't think the judge has read your paper so the judge can understand more about your particular context as you present and the judge has something to look back at when you're done. If you're looking for tips of creative things you might leave with the judge, check out the video above that explains all the different ways that you can put together a different written event. This was just specific for the operations research projects, but that video will help you understand just presentations in general. Last but not least, and I can't say this enough, you have to go in and exude confidence and know your stuff inside and out. 
I strongly encourage you to memorize your presentation. And yes, I know that's hard, but you wanna speak with a passion and with a level of influence, and you can't do that if you're reading off note cards. If you would do all this, I can't wait to see you at ICDC, and best of luck on that DECA success journey.